If you're trying to create your own record, there seem to be no shortage of techniques available to you. Of course, we have the standard industry method, tried and true, but we've also got lathe, lathe, 3D printed, laser, horizontal lathe, laser, lathe, and laser lathe. But one that I've not seen is someone trying to mill a record using a CNC machine. I came up with the idea when I was milling some PCBs the other day. If a mill is capable of milling out these tiny isolation paths, maybe it could also be used to mill a groove into a record. I'll start with the math because I'll use it to write a G-code program for my CNC router to run. In Cartesian coordinates, which is what my mill uses, I can make a circle using the sine and cosine functions. If r is a constant, we'll get a circle with radius r. A record groove is a spiral, so for each full revolution I'll take a bit off the radius as I go along. Now I have a spiral inwards to the center. The third step is to add in the audio data, which sounds hard, but it's actually just as easy. All I have to do is add the audio waveform samples to R. If the sample's positive, we move a little bit further from the center. If it's negative, it goes a little bit closer to the center. Lastly, I want to rewrite our angle theta in terms of the sample number of each sample. Given the speed of the turntable and the sample rate of our audio, we can use this to make a toolpath that will cut a record which will play at the right speed. Okay, throw this all together and adjust some scale factors, and we get something that looks like this. I took the same code I used to make this graph and made it write G-code. So you can see all these G1 commands. Those tell the mill to move to that position from the previous position in a straight line. So it's the same thing we're doing on the graph, except on the CNC. I've been looking around the house for something to mill records into and came up with this stuff. This is actually shipping material that they use to ship PCB stencils in. They put it in these boards to stop them from being bent in transport. Besides that, I think this stuff is actually a waste material from the factory. For when they're drilling holes in the PCB, they put this stuff under it to support it. I'm not 100% sure exactly what this stuff is. Obviously, it's some kind of wood or paper product. It feels sort of in between hard cardboard and masonite. But the reason I want to use it for a record is because of all these tiny holes left over from when they were drilling vias through the PCBs into it. It's held these dimensions really well. And I know this stuff won't melt, which is what happened when I tried to mill a record into a piece of plastic. But I guess the only way to find out is just to try it and see what happens. To play back the records, I'm going to be using this machine. And the main reason for that is because old wind-up record players like this, by design, have replaceable needles. In fact, you're supposed to replace the needle after each record. That way, I don't have to worry about messing up a good needle on a regular record player. Now, I'm going for a 78 RPM record, not just because I want to play it on a Victrola, but also because the record rotates faster than a normal LP. That means that per unit rotation, I'll have to embed less data into the record than a slower record, so I can get away with a groove that gets cut at a lower resolution. Of course, the CNC is also cutting way slower than a regular record lathe ever would. Like any CNC, there's a trade-off between speed and detail. For the 40 seconds of audio on this record, it took nearly 3 hours to cut it all out, going at about 0.37% of real-time speed. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that while this is the cheap Chinese, uh, 3020 or 3018, whatever it is, CNC from China special. It is the model that has ball screws, so it's really good at precise positioning. Makes great uh, PCB milling. No idea if you could try this on any of the standard lead screw models, you'd probably have to watch your backlash pretty close. The steppers on this are just the regular 1.8 degree ones, or at least I assume they're 1.8, uh, but I do have micro stepping turned on. Okay, we're done didn't look all that promising at first. Despite not melting like the plastic one I tried earlier did, the entire record is covered in a thick layer of sticky sawdust. It's all packed into the grooves too, but I eventually got most of it out. After a couple of test plays, I noticed that the walls of the grooves were starting to break off. The needle didn't seem to have any trouble tracking the remains of the groove at the bottom, so I ended up scraping off the rest of the walls with my fingers. Before I show you what it sounds like, let's see how we did. Here's the wood record under a microscope made entirely of tiny fibers, but if you look closely, you can spot the groove. For comparison, here's a commercial shellac 78. The groove is way smoother, even though the record is super dusty and there's all those scratches on the top surface. I'd expect the wood record to be pretty noisy. I think the CNC could do better, but I'd still need a material that doesn't melt at the slow cut speed. 
Maybe something like hard plastic or glass? Looks like the groove width came out really about right, although the spacing is about twice that of the regular 78. A full-size wood record would probably hold about a minute and a half of audio instead of three minutes. Honestly, it sounded better than I expected. I did have to give the turntable a bit of a boost with my finger. The spring motor just isn't powerful enough to play this record by itself. I also decided to see what would happen if I replaced the steel needle with a wooden toothpick. 